Okay. So this situation in Missouri, people to fight between the sister Marnice DeClue and a white American girl, Kaylee Gain. Uh, the sister Marnice DeClue was forced to defend herself against an aggressor by the name of Kaylee Gain. Marnice DeClue is 15 years of age, honor student. She's a violinist, speaks four languages, even Korean. She's on a volleyball team. She was placed in college level AP courses due to her academic excellence. Never been in trouble before in school, clean record, and she was forced to defend herself against Kaylee Gain, who was out of school on suspension, known as a bully. She was suspended from school, was not supposed to be on school grounds at the time, yet she came to the school to assault Marnice DeClue and or whoever else and be a bully. And this is why the school is not saying anything. She was suspended at the time, and she came to school looking for violence, and she got it. She got that violence that she was looking for. Okay, y'all seen that. I can't show it, but you heard somebody in that video there rooting Kaylee on. She was fighting a different girl, you know, feeling good about herself winning, being the bully that she is, very violent, until she met a thumper, until she met somebody that she, she thought she could take advantage of because they were a good student in school and academic, unlike her, okay? Now, I was waiting in this situation to see what was going to happen with the condition of the white girl, Kaylee Gain, because, you know, I didn't want to be insensitive. You know what I'm saying? It looked like she would be possibly checking out after that. After what I seen, I thought she was going to check out. And as much as we have to battle and struggle and go through our energy halves not to be like them, you know, which is what I was dealing with, I still didn't want to see that girl, you know, pass away from that. She's a 15, whatever, 16-year-old girl. I didn't want to see her pass away from that. You know, it was just a fight. You know what I'm saying? But now she's good. She's all good. I believe she's back home. So I said, you know what? Let me touch on this one right here. Now, in this situation with this fight here, where the sister Marnice was fit, forced to defend herself, white America could not stomach seeing this white bully get the soul beat out of her by this young black youth right here. They couldn't stomach it, okay? Although they see the video, they could see who swung first and who responded, okay? They don't care. They do not care. All they know is this young black girl is beating the soul out of one of our own. I don't care if she's wrong, whatever. This is not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to happen. You had grown, you, you had adults, many white adults, content creators on various platforms coming out, calling for this young sister to be put away for life and charged with the M word and all this other stuff, charged as an adult. We're talking about adult white content creators on various platforms. Okay? See, this girl right here, this Kaylee Gain girl, she was really feeling herself. She had been watching TV. You know, she watched probably Housewives of Atlanta. She's hanging out with black kids and stuff like that. She's got a black boyfriend. Yeah, 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 she's got a black boyfriend, okay? And she was feeling herself. And nothing makes these white women like Kaylee, you know, feel more confident than knowing that they have a black boyfriend and they have black people in their corner who are going to be with them when they do their little violent thing and they bullying thing. That's what that was all about, yo. You know what I'm saying? This girl, Kaylee, was feeling herself. She figured, okay, I'm all the way with this action. I got a black boyfriend. I'm doing the black thing. You know, she thought she was all the way in, feeling herself. And people, you know this. Nothing makes some of these white women feel more confident than knowing that they have a black boyfriend or they have black people in their corner to be with them when they do their BS, when they do their bull, when they do their, you know, their violence or whatever. You all know that, man. Come on. 
She felt as though she could bully a black girl. Her black boyfriend was supporting her and bullying Marnice. And Marnice fought with that black street rage. She was not ready for that, okay? She was not ready for that. She was not ready to fight somebody who really knew how to fight, who knew how to punch from their hips and their legs and, and, and throw people and stuff. But she wasn't ready for that kind of violence. So here's the thing. As bad as that video looked, okay, as bad as that video looked, if you are a black person and you know you're from, I don't know, you're from a predominantly black area, whether it be a hood, the hood or the country, I don't know, a suburb that's black, whatever. If you from the hood, any type of area where black people live predominantly, you know even at that age, those girls are 15, that's their high school age, and even younger, you know that's how black people fight, yo. That's how black people fight. That, that video was not, it was not a shocker, okay? That is how black people fight. You know what I'm saying? You know that. I mean, even though we know watching that video, there were racial undertones there. Of course there were. They're out here in Missouri. Of course there were racial undertones, okay? And I'm sure since the, the white girl, Kaylee, she's got a black boyfriend. She's got black people supporting everything that she does that's not good. She probably didn't respect black people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these white women that, you know, she's young, but she would have grown into a white woman that just didn't respect black people. Most of them don't, okay? And people, you know that even though with those racial undertones, that's how black people fight, man. Even at 15, even if Kaylee was black, she would have got did dirty like that, man. Okay? That's, look, man, that's how it is. That's just how it is. It, it, it is a brutal fight. Okay, it's a brutal fight, even at 15, even younger, even younger. Check. I remember this time. Right. I'm going to jump off right quick and get back on. I remember this. time. I was 12, 12 years old, seventh grade. I remember I was 12 years old in seventh grade. I used to go to school with this dude named Brian. I'm not even going to say his last name, but I remember his last name, but I'm not going to say, it. you know, his name was Brian. I was 12 at the time. He might have been 13. He was big for his age, though. He he could have passed for 15, you know, probably 16. He was big for his age with a big, you know, worn out box fade that never got, you know, tightened up. He had one of them worn out box fades where the side hair was just as high as the top. Like he, his mom wasn't taking like his parents didn't get his hair cut off or whatever. But this dude, Brian, I remember we were 12 years old, Trenton, New Jersey, y'all. I remember walking home with, with it, this dude, Brian. He kind of he, he, he kind of sometimes took advantage of the way he looked in his size. Big black dude, you know, kind of, you know, 13. He was about 13. He kind of took advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? And he had some words with some other kids in school, you know, had some words with some other kids at school. And I remember walking home from school. I'm going I'm leaving school. And this dude, Brian, was out. He was walking too, wherever he was going. I wasn't with him. He wasn't, you know, I, I didn't like him like that, but I didn't hate him or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But he was walking from school, too. And these people that he had words with, mind you, these people are in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and maybe some neighborhood kids who came who were definitely not in high school yet. OK, man, I remember they caught up with him, man, and they gave him the, a beating that I will always remember. It's burnt in my brain from the age of 12. And, you know, of course, I've seen people get beat up before. We all have, but this was a different kind of beating. I mean, when they got him on the ground, they literally they split him in the head with bricks, cinder blocks, kicked his eyes in. I mean, they straight brutalized him, and then they left him there leaking. And he laid on that ground leaking until the ambulance came and got him. I was just like, wow. And these people, we were all younger than Marnice. And Kaylee, okay? And to this day, that was seventh grade. To this day, I never seen Brian again. Never. I mean, it not one not after that day, I never seen him again. I don't know what happened to him. And even in Trenton, New Jersey, there's only one high school. 
Trenton High School. I used to wonder where this dude Brian was at when I got to high school. So I'm like, I know he probably here because that beat down was burned in my brain. I'm like, I never seen this dude again. I never seen his name on a list. I never seen this dude to this day from 12 years old. You know what I mean? That was one of them beatings that would probably make a family send you to North Carolina, man. You know what I'm saying? One of them type of, we got to get him out of town if he's okay. I don't know where this dude is at, but let me get back on this, people. So I'm saying this. Black youths fight very aggressive and violent, and Kaylee found out she was not ready for that. She wanted all the rhythm without the blues, and they got that girl got her. You know what I mean? She had the black boyfriend, you know what I mean, all that stuff. You see, you see, when they were out there fighting people, it was black people helping her. You know what I mean? It was black people helping her. Her head was real big until Marnice ragdolled her and made the entire white community, okay? She made the, the entire white community came out for this girl fight. I mean, even the attorney general in Missouri named Andrew Bell, the governor, the governor of the state came out to speak against this young uh, black sister uh, who did this to their little sister. When does the governor and the attorney general come out speak? The entire white community got together. They raised like half a million for this white girl. Very pissed off. All kinds of content creators. Okay. They couldn't stand to see this white girl, Kaylee, getting beat down by this black girl. This was all about race, people. This fight, the outcome to this was all about race. They don't care who started it. They don't care who threw the first punch. They don't care about the character of the individuals. It was all about all white Americans know is a black person is not supposed to beat one of us down like that and let us see it. That did something to them. White fragility is real. You know, that's the bottom line to them. This is some white supremacist American stuff at the core. That beat down took over the nation. OK, that's America. It don't matter, you know, what kind of superficial stuff people try to show you all. You know what I mean? It don't matter that right there. That showed people what America was all about. They don't care about the character. They don't care who threw the first punch. All we know is she's white. She's black. No, it's supposed to be the other way around. You know what I mean? That's America, for real. I don't care what kind of superficial nonsense BS they show you, the sports, the teammates, Troy Aikman throwing touchdowns to Michael Irvin and hugging and all that other dumps, the white coach in college, all these fake interracial couple nonsense. At the core, America is all about racism. It does not matter. And the white community made it like that. That's the only way to fix it. They got to change their ways, Okay. This fight right here made them all come out, okay? It's, that's not supposed to happen to a white girl. That's all they said, you know what I mean? That's all they can see and understand. Now, in this situation, though, there are some white folks who are standing on some white principles, okay? I don't like you, but I, res I got a little bit more respect. I don't like y'all, though. And you, you're not donating to Kaylee. You said that she's got a black boyfriend, She's done later for her. She went that way. She's outcast. Okay, I respect that. You know, yeah, you standing on that. I respect that. You know, I don't like you, but I kind of respect that, you know, a little bit, you know, more. Okay, because Kaylee, you, you had a black boyfriend. Kaylee's mom and dad, she's got a black boyfriend. She crossed the grain and the white community don't play like that. You know, they don't play like that. Okay, so if you didn't know and you happen to be white, you know, Kaylee was out there fighting with black people, and she has a black boyfriend who was helping her bully this sister right here who beat her down, and she got the soul beat out of her. So maybe you can go see about getting your GoFundMe uh, money back. Maybe it could be, could be reversible. You know, I know a lot of you all just jumped out the window donating because all you seen was a black girl and a white girl, the black girl beating down a white girl. But people, she does have a black boyfriend, you know what I mean? you might want to get your money back. Maybe that changes how you feel about that. I'm sure it does for a lot of you. And, and, and many of them have been very vocal about the fact that, oh, she's got a black boyfriend later for her, you know? And I don't think this black boyfriend is a five-star athlete or nothing like that in high school. I don't think he's going to be a, a Georgia Bulldog or going to USC to play a sport. I, none of that, just a regular black dude. So you might want to get your money back from that GoFundMe if you can, you know? That bag is up to like a half million people because 
the white community responded. You know, they responded emotionally with hatred, seeing their sister get beat down like that. Anyway, people, let me say again, man, I didn't want to see the girl. I didn't want to see her pass away from just a fight because that's all it was. If it was a different situation, guns, and I probably wouldn't so much care. She started it. She got the bad end of it, and I definitely didn't want to see the sister Marnice, the clue, uh, getting charged with a body. They're still trying to do what they're trying to do, but, you know, hopefully she has a legal team behind her, you know, that's going to prove, j just give all the details. Once they get the details, I mean, it's going to take some real hardcore racism from a judge, you know, or whoever to say, oh, no, we're going to keep going with this, which, you know, that's a possibility. And I don't think there's a GoFundMe for Marnice because, I think that they said they had to remove it because she's being charged with some kind of GoFundMe rules. I don't know. Something they're trying to say. I do notice that sometimes when white police officers uh, do something or white, you know, like, you know, white guys do something, they're being charged with doing something to somebody black. They have other platforms as opposed to GoFundMe. You know what I mean? For them. So they're not they're not always on GoFundMe. But I know that. Uh. Marnice the Clue, I think they had one up, but maybe her people can go ahead and get on one of these other platforms, look into it or whatever, and see what's what, because she's going to need the legal money. But, you know, people, get in the comments. Let me know what you think about this situation right here. Easy.